All right. Uh, this is a replay in the Tier 8 uh, Japanese uh, medium, the STA-1, um, on Maravanka from the Northeast Spawn. I've done Maravanka from the Northeast before, and the last one I think was the 1390. Um, and I kind of wanted to show more of this A2 area. The primary purpose of this particular video is not Moravanka specific strategies and or tips, um, although I'll kind of comment on some things that I, I think people do well or poorly. Uh, particularly because um, our bank is going to be changing in the next patch anyways, and so you'll have a whole new map to learn. But hopefully we'll be able to take away things that you'll be able to use on any map, in particular camo sniping and, you know, and or bush sniping, whatever you want to call it. Um, and there's a particularly good place over here. And so the northeast spawn, I think, always has the advantage of attacking through this west area over here, primarily because of this A1, A2 area. And so that's where we're going to head. And then what we'll see is that the other the enemy team pushes a lot of their forces up here. And so my recommendation is whenever you're this southwest spawn, right, you send a token force to uh, defend over here and you don't send them past E2, particularly, you know, as we've discussed in uh, some of our other videos, you can get shot uh, in the E2 area from the forest relatively easily if they control the E line in the forest. So we have a pretty split dispersion here, which is fine. Um, and then so what we're going to do is we're going to get into this bush here. And the way that you want to camo snipe is that if you can see through the bush if it's transparent then so when you fire other things can see you um, but if it's if the bush is not transparent see how I, I have to can only shoot at the outlines of these tanks as a general rule of thumb that means that those tanks that are on the other side of the bush will not light me if I fire. Um, this is uh, uh, does not prevent you from, you know, if there's a guy to the left or the right, you know, if, if you fire, you will still get lit by them. Um, so you have that's something that you certainly have to keep in mind. Um, and so what I generally do is I'll go into the bush and then I'll back up so it's just barely not transparent. And then if I need to light again, all I'll do is just drive forward a couple meters and then drive back a couple meters. That way you don't have to range find every time that you do it. And so what we see is that they push, you know, like six tanks up here, I think, um, including three of their nines, you know, all of their top tier tanks come up here. Um, but they're basically just in this area where they can get hammered. So they're getting hammered from the north side over here. And if they back up into this E2, see how we have guys on this line right here? If they back up into this E2, they're going to get hammered by these guys and by, by artillery. And then you'll notice how I just move forward and back to uh, when I need to get spots. And I'm just trying to hatch him there. Don't really, he's hiding behind the corpse of another tank, uh, but it's not going to work out very well for him anyways. Okay, and so there's still two tanks there left there, but we killed all three of their nines there, you know, and it's two and a half minutes into the game. So all of their top tier tanks are dead two and a half minutes into the game which is not you know what you want to see out of those those tanks and then it's very easy once you have whittled them down enough it's important not to sit here for too long and just wait and just you know wait and wait and wait you know take some initiative and go ahead and push like watch this type 59 he's going to go in and i'm going to make sure that i'm i'm there to back him up So like these guys, right, you don't want to sit there. When you see this guy moving in, you want to just move in and get your shots, which the E-75 is now doing. It's a trap! And then so we basically killed, let's see, how many tanks was that? One, two, three, four, five. Is it just the five? Oh yeah, T21, 6, IS-6 in the middle doesn't really count, JP-2 up top, so uh, 7 tanks over here, so they committed, you know, just about half of their forces to this west side, and uh, we were able to pretty much obliterate them pretty quickly. And then what you want to do again, if they're not pressuring your forest, this is the, the situation where if you're winning your side faster than they're winning the other side, you don't have to rush, you know, you can take your time. But we, we know that there's a 5100 here. We know that they've got at least two tanks here that limits the number of tanks that they can have left over. The artillery is probably over here someplace. This 5100 is most likely clipping, which is why he's running away. It's a trap!
and then it, I, at this point it's pretty much mop up but the the moral of the story really is that because they push north um, into this area where they had to drive down an alley against people who were camo sniping them and then w they had no avenue of retreat right when w if they tried to retreat through that e2 they were going to get hammered by artillery and or the three tank destroyers that we had over in e8 um, and then also the uh, because of that, they just lost so much HP, they traded so poorly for HP there um, that they didn't have enough health to do anything anywhere anywhere else. Um, so despite them having, you know, superior HP there, superior firepower, superior armor, right, um, because uh, for the most part, uh, when you look at the tanks that, that did the damage there, let me bring that up. So when you look at the, the tanks that did the damage there, um, it was really arty, tier 8, tier 8, tier 8, you know, sort of tanks. Um, the T-95 did most of his damage in the, in the forest. Um, but so you have these mid-tiers fighting against the high tiers and just trading so well because they're in, in an open plane where you can just basically tee off on them. And so those are the types of situations that you want to avoid, not just on Moravanka, but on, on a lot of different maps where um, they have these long approaches. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to identify those more as we, you know, go through maps and, and, and on the stream and whatnot. So we were able to get a, a good amount of damage, even from a tank that really doesn't have a lot of alpha. It's got decent DPM. Um, but because we were able to just sit in the bush unimpeded and shoot tanks for free, um, that certainly gives you a huge advantage in, in the damage section. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind, um, particularly the mechanics of, of camo sniping and uh, something that if you can utilize not just on this map but on, on any map is going to be really useful um, for you. So I think that's about it, so thanks for watching.